Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and this is part two in my superhero chest armor build. In part one, we went all over the fabrication of the chest and the abs as if your costume had a jacket or a cape that was obscuring the back half. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the steps that it takes to put the back armor together, as well as the steps I took to paint it. Now, just like the front, this is a completely generic setup, so you don't necessarily have to be making Red Hood. You could use this for a variety of different characters, and that is the point. Now, just like everything else I build, this is made completely out of my HD phone, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials. And every time you go through those links that are in the description section and on my website, not only are you getting fantastic foam for cosplay and prop fabrication, but it's also helping to support me and the channel, which means I get to continue to make things like this, give you free PDF files, and show you how to put it all together. So I want to show you what it takes to finish off this Red Hood armor. Let's go ahead and get started. Going through my templates that I had created for the back armor, I'm going to take part A and trace and cut that out of some 6mm foam. To give this piece some dimension, I'm going to mark a central line. This is going to act as a guide so I can remove some material with a stone bit on my rotary tool. The V groove that I've carved into the piece will allow the foam to bend in on itself. Using my heat gun to warm up the foam, then I slightly bend it in, and now I'm going to use some super glue to lock it into place. And as you can see here, it gives a nice angled look to the piece. For some additional reinforcement, I'm going to add some Surebonder hot glue to the back side. To give this spine some detail, I'm going to take part B and transfer that onto some 4mm foam 5 times. All these pieces are going to overlap one another, and while I'm gluing them together, I'm slightly rounding them. That's going to help these details conform to part A. Once all the pieces have been glued together, I'm going to take some contact cement and super glue and attach all the part B pieces to part A. Now just like the front template, all these details are just a suggestion. You can build it exactly like I am in the video, or use your imagination, do your own thing. Now I'm going to attach part C on either side. This is traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. The edges for this are also going to be beveled with my rotary tool before it's attached. Super glue is added to some of the spine details and along the side, and now part C can be attached. And you can see how the V-cut on part A gives this piece a lot more dimension, and it's a lot more interesting than just being flat. Now I can add some additional details to part C. These are going to be made up of pieces part D and part E. Both are going to be cut out of 4mm foam. Just like the other pieces, the edges are rounded over and heat sealed before marking around them and gluing them into place. The thing that's fun about these kinds of builds is I didn't have a plan for this. I'm just putting it together as I go. I can now take part F and cut that out of some 10mm foam. This is going to make the upper section of the spine armor. The top of part F is beveled and heat sealed, and then I can glue it to the back side of part A. Part G is now going to be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam two times. The sides are once again going to be beveled, and then contact cement and super glue is going to be added to the piece, and it can be glued to the back side of part C. At the top of the piece, there's a small section that will be glued to the back side of part F. The sides of the back armor are going to be made up of part H, which is traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. On the template, you can see there's a section you can extend or cut that will wrap around your body so that it fits you. Part H can now be glued on either side, and I've marked a rough location on the template. But you don't necessarily have to follow this, glue it where it's comfortable for you. For the shoulder blade armor, part I is transferred and cut out of some 10mm foam two times. After being beveled, these pieces are heat sealed and then I'm going to manipulate them with my hands. While these are being glued into place, I'm curving the part I pieces and the top of part G. This is going to give the piece some overall dimension and help it conform to my back. Part J is now going to be traced and cut out of some 10mm foam. And I know it doesn't seem like a big piece, but gluing it to part F while it's curved helps with the overall shape. To give some detail and layering to the lower back, part K is going to be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. Just like the upper pieces, gluing part K in while it's curved gives the armor its overall shape. Do not glue all these pieces together flat, it just won't set properly on your back. For a transition from part A to part K, part L is going to be traced and cut out of some 4mm foam. 
Little pieces like this help the armor with overall detail, but it really helps stabilize the back spine. Now for this video, since I'm doing the front and back armor and they're going to be connected, I'm going to remove the straps from the chest. These are going to be replaced by part M, which is going to be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. These straps are marked and glued to the back side of the chest using my double adhesive method of contact cement and super glue. After my measurements have been confirmed, I can glue the straps now to the back side of part G. To connect the chest and the back armor together, I'm going to use the parachute clips that I already have attached. I cut the 1 inch nylon straps on either side to fit, and then I can glue those into place using some high temp hot glue. Just to make sure the straps don't ever pull away from the foam, I'm going to glue some small strips of 2mm on top using super glue. Again, a double adhesive method is always preferable for heavy wear areas. For the other end of the parachute clip, I can now mark exactly where the nylon strap needs to go into the back. Just like the other side, some hot glue and super glue are used to adhere the strap into place. Now don't worry about the strap being exposed, we're going to cover it with a detailed piece of foam later. The same adhesive method is done to the nylon straps on the inside of the armor as well. The parachute clips on either side are now solid and in place, so it's time for a test fit. Everything looks good and fits exactly where I want it to, so now I can start to detail the rest of the armor. To cover the straps on the sides of the armor, I'm going to cut part N out of some 4mm foam. Now parts N, O, and P may need to be different sizes for you, depending on how the armor wraps around your body. And as you can see, it does a good job hiding the straps, but it looks like a functional part of the armor. To add an additional detail to the lower section of the armor, I'm going to trace and cut part O out of some 4mm foam. So if you have to make some custom armor details, this is how I do it. I'll draw an approximate shape of the armor piece onto some Bristol board using a pencil. After that, I'll rough cut the section with some scissors and I'll check that for fit. After that, I can cut those sections out of foam and then glue them into place. Just like the back, notice that when I'm gluing this piece down, I'm rounding over the foam so it has that continual curve. Like the front of the armor, I'm going to add a couple of resin cast pieces to the back just to keep the aesthetics the same. Now it's time to prime and paint, so I'm going to mask off all my parachute clips with some paper towels. As a base, I'm going to add three light coats of Plasti Dip and a layer of black primer to the armor. To prep the surface for additional layers of paint, I'm going to do a wash of Liquitex Mars Black. This is going to be applied with a mop brush, and then I'm going to use a damp paper towel to alleviate the brush strokes and take away additional pigment. This process is also going to give a really nice texture to the surface of the armor. The same wash process can also be applied to the back. As the first layer of metallics for the abs and the chest, I'm going to be using FX brand Samurai Sword. I don't really need to use one of my heavy body Liquitex paints here because it's just going to act as a base for the graphite powder. The metallic paint can also be added to the chest and the sides of the armor using a filbert brush. Now here's where the magic happens, I'm going to be using some graphite powder. This is going to be applied with a paper towel and then buffed, and you can see a huge difference between the two sides of the chest armor. This same application and buffing process is also applied to the abs. For some definition to the armor, I'm going to apply the graphite powder around the perimeter of each piece. Now this doesn't need to be a clean and tidy process because I kind of want it to have that battle-worn look. The graphite powder can also be applied to the back, and if you notice I've tried to highlight some sections as though metal has been scraped away. At this point I wanted more contrast between the chest, abs, and the rest of the armor, so I was able to knock back some of that with a clear coat. And I think this looks a lot better, a lot more deliberate, and especially from a distance.
To give the metal sections a little bit of texture, I'm going to stipple on some iridescent rich silver with a mop brush. Now the trick here is to stipple on the paint, but before it is completely dried, you want to go back with a dry mop brush and feather the surface. This will kind of blur the paint and give it a galvanized look. I can now go in with that same iridescent rich silver and a filbert brush and highlight some of the edges. This is going to give it a worn look again as if paint has been scraped down to the metal. For the logo on the chest, I'm going to start with a base layer of FX Bloodline. I'm doing this because red can sometimes have a hard time covering on just black, and I want this to be pretty vibrant. Up next, I'm going to be using some cadmium red and dioxazine purple. The purple is going to help knock the cadmium red back a little bit so it's not quite as vibrant. Now I can go in with a little more of the cadmium red to highlight some of the areas. What these layers are doing is building up value and it would have been a lot different than just adding the cadmium red to the black logo in the beginning. To get rid of any strokes the filbert brush may have caused, I go in with a mop brush to stipple the surface. I've got some metallics and I've got some flats. I'm going to add a gloss to the logo to really help it stand out. So you all can see the steps that I took to put together my own custom superhero armor. And again, you don't have to necessarily be making Red Hood. You could use this armor for a variety of different characters and I want to see those. So if you are building any of my builds or utilizing some HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.